field and what about the city itself? I think it was uh, Alfred Hitchcock who first called it seven suburbs in search of a city. A little tough, but Judd Rose explored that. Else in the world where you can go into a supermarket and perhaps see Charlton Heston fondling a cantaloupe. Overstatement, perhaps, but then hyperbole is the calling card of America's second biggest metropolis. The biggest, the best, the richest, fastest, and flashiest, they're all right here. Big? Try almost 8 million people spread out over more than 4,000 square miles dotted with 48,000 palm trees. L.A. is America's biggest fishing port and has the most street gangs, not to mention a bank robbery a day every day for the past five years. There are 3,600 traffic lights, 725 miles of freeways, and 5 million cars that log 200 million miles a day. Big? The mystery writer Raymond Chandler called L.A. a big, hard-boiled city with no more personality than a paper cup. But L.A.'s cup runneth over. Oh, I think we still have the Eastern feeling um, that we are a bunch of um, nuts out here, that we wear short pants and bikinis and, and surf and smoke pot, and that we don't do anything very seriously out here. But what to make of this crazy quilt of cars and cocaine and conspicuous consumption, of smog and surf and sprawl and the Sunset Strip, of mansions and Manson, of movie stars and mudslides, a place where the people can choose between life on the fault line or life in the fast lane. And so they cajole themselves into thinking they're doing something interesting by inventing a diet per week or um, chemically altering themselves to the point where they might be able to accept this, some babble from the newest guru that comes down the pike and sets up a religion business for them. These people are desperate for entertainment. Well, it is, of course, the entertainment capital. It was Frank Lloyd Wright who suggested someone must have tipped the continent and everything loose rolled into Southern California. There are, it seems, a, a, a higher percentage of strange sort of cults and religions and, and uh, really weird sort of people here. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's because it's at the edge of the continent and they have nowhere further to go. It is, in fact, the cutting edge of the continent, this jewel of the Pacific Rim. L.A. has always marched its own way, always will. Even now, it marches away from the rest of America, geologically speaking, at a rate of about 23 feet a century. It's easy to be a model for fads, whether they're topless or whammo -less or whatever they are. It's difficult to be a model and set an example when you are a society that really wants to be left alone. Call this the garbo of cities. Its people want to be left alone. They are the new melting pot. Two million Mexicans, 200,000 Salvadorans, more Koreans than anywhere outside of Seoul, more Armenians than there are in Armenia. They are aerospace workers and computer programmers, civil servants, rednecks in pickups, blacks in watts, and valley girls. Well, the dreams of being larger than life, the dreams of living forever, the dreams of being rich are what bring people here. Nobody comes here to work nine to five. If you want to work nine to five, stay in Milwaukee, stay in the Bronx, stay in Dallas. Or come here. You may find the lotus land of myth, or maybe what you left behind. H.L. Mencken called this double Dubuque. To John Gunther, it was Iowa with palms. I went to a wedding reception the other day in Orange County and it was like a Norman Rockwell Saturday evening post cover. If you can ignore the stories about uh, hot tubs and cocaine parties, then you realize that these other things persist as well. And the nice thing is that they live side by side. And if after all that you still don't understand Los Angeles, don't feel bad, you probably never will. Those who live here, who are born and raised here, they don't. If the city has no particular identity, well, it's not supposed to. So come on back sometime and take another look. Come on back and live. As someone once said, there's no reason anyone should die in the city of the angels. They'll never get any closer to heaven. Look at the first semifinal.